Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is Ian with Out of This World Reader, and it is time for a well needed book haul video. I have been putting this off for quite some time now. I keep forgetting to just film. But I've logged all the books I've got these last couple months, and there is quite a few, as you can tell from all these up here. Since there's so many to go through, I'm just going to kind of randomly select one off of here and just give you what little knowledge I know about it, or if I've read it, kind of what I kind of thought about it. But let's just dive right in. One of the books I got was The Death of Miss Westaway by Ruth Ware. And this was to settle a very complicated relationship with an author that I've encountered throughout many years. And she was two and two with her other books. And thankfully, this one saved my relationship with her. And I will continue to read her books in the future. I did a book chat on this, so make sure to go check that out. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This was really, this really surprised me. I also did a book chat on this, but... It was very, like, it had deeper meanings and it had kind of like a historical kind of background, which is why I think it connected to it so well. But this is following, like, two perspectives, two to three perspectives, both in, like, different timelines, one in present time and one back in, I think, late 18th, 18th or 19th century London. And one of these ladies is the apothecary kind of poisoner, and she takes potions and kind of gives them to women in need of kind of whether they're being abused or anything and she just gives them these poisons and then they die but something deeper is going on here and some problems kind of arise and then in the present time one of the characters has to kind of uncover this mysterious vial that she finds and kind of learn more about what's going on with her but really great like it had like a deeper meaning and it really connected with me somehow because of that kind of historical kind of background of it. The next one I picked up was The Girl with the Loudest Voice by Abby Dare. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I honestly have no idea what's going on with this, but I've heard this is just a great book that is a must read for everyone. A lot of people recommended it to me and I just thought I could pick it up as kind of like an add-on with my other books. and. Sadly, I haven't got to it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's it's a book of the year finalist, and that's about all I know about it. I think it's following kind of like this young girl and her journey with education, but I've heard it's very emotional and packs a good impact, so I'm hoping to dive into this soon. A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tals. This is one of the books I really wanted to read this spring, I believe, but it's following this young, or this man that's kind of watching from his hotel balcony as the events of kind of after the Russian Revolution occur and just what's going on. He's on trial from the Bolsheviks, I believe, and it's just following his journey in the kind of hotel as he's kind of trapped there. Not so much trapped, but he's being held there. And it just follows his thoughts as he kind of watches what unfolds in Moscow. I'm really hoping to get to this soon. I've, I know, I'm going to say that so many times throughout this video, but it's a historical fiction that I really want to pick up because it follows a time period that I'm really interested in. Just the Russian Revolution in general, like what it happened and how it shaped it. I'm really like, I, that's just something I've always been interested in is just that Russian Revolution. The next one that I have no idea what's going on with is The Conductors by N Nicole Glover. I think this is just kind of like a magical retelling of the Underground Railroad and these two characters are kind of helping slaves escape the South and I'm just really hoping to dive into it soon. It sounds really interesting. I believe this is a debut novel and I got it in a book box but I just like historical fiction and fantasy like combine that together and you have like a good book. I think it involves like the magical system evolving around kind of like the stars or kind of like your, what is it called, um, I can't think of it. Like you know those things are just like Sagittarius and Scorpio and all that. I think it's following kind of magic surrounding that but really kind of interesting background and premise even though I kind of don't know much about it. Another one that I got in a book box was A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttlesworth. I've heard a lot about this actually. 
It's and it's, it's stunning, a stunning cover. And this takes place in Toronto, I believe, following kind of four queer fairies or kind of fairy folk, but something deeper is kind of going on in Toronto and they've got to kind of save the world. That's as much as I know. But like I mentioned, I've heard lots of great things about this and a lot of people are kind of praising this. I believe it's another debut off, like a debut. So we'll see how that goes. The Gilded Ones by Namina Forda. You already know how I feel about this. This was an, a debut novel by name, Namina Forna. And I did a book chat on that because I enjoyed this new series, new start to the series so much. It's following Decca as she kind of hopes that her blood will kind of run red like everybody else and be allowed into society. But her blood runs gold and then from there she's kind of cast away and this mysterious lady shows up and offers her a kind of position in the kind of king's military to fight these mysterious death shrieks. And then from there she travels to this training academy, finds some new friends, and then the battles begin. So I really enjoyed this. I believe I gave this four stars, but can't wait for this second book in the series. This next one is Blood Sworn by Scott Rankton, which is the second book in the Ash Lords. I don't know if it's a duology or trilogy yet, but like I mentioned, this is the second book in the series, and this is following kind of this race that involves phoenixes, and each kind of morning they lay out these ashes and with alchemy and just kind of magic, essentially, they raise these phoenixes to race in this annual race for the Empire and these three characters are each kind of in it for something different and like I really enjoyed that first one like it was something it was like a mix of like the Hunger Games the Scor Scorpio races I believe that's I haven't read that one but then like Wolf by Wolf and I really enjoyed it and I sadly had to wait for this new release but I'm I, like, I think I'm gonna be picking I think by the time you watch this video I've already read this but I can't wait to just like dive in back into this world and because the, the first one really left off with like a lot of questions and kind of like a cliffhanger so I can't wait to just dive back into this world. Another book that I got in a book box was The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. I've heard a lot about the author. She's very renowned in the historical fiction kind of genre. She's got a lot of other books that I really want to check out. Like I have The Huntress on my bookshelves as well that I want to get to before I get to this one because that one involves a character named Ian. So I, f I have to pick that up. But I have no idea what's going on with this one. I think my sister, one of my older sisters, really wanted to get to this because she absolutely loves this author and praises her all the time. So, And it's a new release, so we'll see how that goes. For this next one, it's kind of a bit skeptical as to why I bought the whole series. Like, you know, they say, don't buy the whole series if you haven't read them because you're going to buy it and you don't like it. But I took a chance and I bought the whole Harry Potter series because I felt that I was just going to love it so much. And I did. I fell in love with the Sorcerer's Stone and I have just been flying through these books. I just finished the Chamber of Secrets. And I'm just falling in love with this, this kind of wizarding world. Hogwarts, the magic, witches and wizards. I always love that. But I can't, I, I, I'm thankful and just glad that I bought the whole series. Because I think this is something that I would like my kind of like children and just my grandchildren to just dive into whenever they're kind of youngins. Because I went in this with like no prior knowledge. I haven't watched the movies or anything, so... Going in blind as an adult, I can say I really enjoyed it just as much as I think if I was younger. Another book following kind of witches and magic is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. I hope I'm saying that right. But I have no idea what's going on. I think that this, I know I've said that like about several books that I have no idea what's going on. But I think I got this in another book box. A lot of book box books. But I think these two witches are basically having to work together. One's a, or not, I don't think, okay, I thought that they're both witches, but one is a witch, the most powerful witch, I believe, and the other is made of magic, but she's not able to kind of harness it. And there's all kinds of plagues and stuff going on in the kingdom, and essentially these two, they have to work together to kind of 
figure out what's going on and save the kind of kingdom. And I believe there's a little bit of romance between them as well. But I've also heard a lot about this and a lot of people had been anticipating this. So we'll dive into that soon. I just love magic and just witches and wizards. I, if you If you have any other recommendations for that, please let me know. This one was one of my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. And it is Aaron Addy by Jennifer Saint. And it is following a kind of a f Greek mythology that's not very well known. Following the princess of the King of Crete and the Minotaur and Theseus. I, I went in depth with kind of like what's going on behind in my most anticipated. But I love Greek mythology and I love retellings. And since this one is following kind of like not a well-known one I'm excited to just dive right into it because it's always like you always hear about kind of like the well-known ones but like the unknown ones are always kind of like the special ones that kind of stick out to me for some reason I don't know why I found that in kind of like Naomi Novik's works with her spinning silver and uprooted I absolutely love those two and they're not well-known folktales so I think not no, not well-known ones kind of like stick out to me more so I can't wait to dive into this one I just you know me I love mythology another book box book is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland and I recently got this this is a new release and I've heard um, quite a bit of kind of hype behind it another anticipated release for a lot of people I believe this is following like a young girl who is kind of hiding her magic because those who can use magic are kind of watched upon by the dead and it's not they're not kind of allowed to use it I believe but then her father dies and she has to use her magic and then from there she has to work together with some other characters to just figure out what's going behind what's going on in kind of the whole kingdom and save it essentially but that's like that's I, I could be completely wrong and I probably am Another one of my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And when I saw this on the book of the month kind of like add-ons, I had to pick it up. But Andy Weir is kind of like one of my favorite science fiction authors. He combines just like real science with science fiction. And in this one, it is following this astronaut that kind of wakes up with no past memory. All of his crew are kind of missing. And he has to kind of like uncover what's going on and what their mission was. And once he does, he figures out that their mission was to essentially save the save the earth. And he has to kind of figure everything out to just save the earth somehow. And I can't wait to dive it in. I absolutely loved Artemis and the Martian. So I don't think I can go wrong with this. Jeremy Fee recently read this and he gave this five stars. And I trust his reviews absolutely and he's he i think he cried or he tried he maybe teared up a little bit and i've i've been looking for books to make me tear up so maybe maybe this one will do it here is another series that i took a chance on and bought the whole kind of hard covers because they were on sale and i couldn't pass that up and there's the magnus chase kind of series by rick riordan i absolutely love Every book I've read by Rick Riordan, and this one is following North Mythology and Annabeth's cousin. So you can't go can't go wrong with kind of North Mythology. I love just mythology in general. I've said that in this kind of video several times, I believe. But then you kind of involve a character that I really enjoyed in the Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus series. They're kind of family member, so I don't think. I can go wrong with this. There's only three books in the series, so and Rick Riordan books for me are always kind of quick reads, so I think I think these ones are gonna be new favorites as well. I believe this is the last book box kind of book, but that is Witches Steeped in Gold by Sienna and Smart. And this is another book that a lot of people have been anticipating. I believe it follows kind of two like Jamaican mythology, I believe, and these two witches are, are kind of like enemies, like absolute enemies and they have to work together and that's about all I know like they yeah they're sworn enemies and they enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds but revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except the lengths yeah 
to win this game, yeah, that's, that's, I, I already want to pick this up, even though it's almost 600 pages, but, you know, if it sounds good to you, you'll just fly through it, and it's got a stunning cover, I just, I've never encountered kind of like J Jamaican mythology, or folktale, Jamaican, myth Jamaican folktale, so, something new that I've never encountered, and I can't wait to dive into. I think this is the only romance book that I have on this kind of book haul, and that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I've heard a lot about the author, Emily Henry. Her other book, Beach Read, is a favorite of many, and I really want to read that in the summer. But this one, I kind of, I'm going to save it for a reading, kind of a readathon for the month of June, so be on the lookout for that. I know I said I was going to read it in the month of May, but I'm going to be including this in my plans for a readathon. I believe this follows kind of two characters that were best friends growing up and they always went on kind of like an annual vacation and then something goes wrong and they're trying to, re they're trying to reconnect on this final vacation and then from there, you know, a little bit of romance happens and then sparks fly, I believe, so we'll see where that goes. I've heard great things about the author and it's involving a vacation in the beach like a tropical setting, and if you know me, I love the beach, tropical, everything about it, so, yes please. Okay, we're getting to the end now, I don't even know how many books I've went through, but a ton. Another book that a lot of people recommended to me, because it just packs a punch, and you learn a lot from it, is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I, I think this, I have no, I have really little knowledge about it, but I believe it follows kind of two sisters that are like they their mother dies, I believe, and they're kind of thrown on different paths and one of them stays in that hometown and the other one kind of moves away and they're trying to reconnect, I believe, and it's just a very emotional read from what I've heard. But it's it's a book of the year finalist and I don't know if that means much to a lot of people, but from what I've heard from my friends and just other kind of booktubers, they've said that this just really packs a punch and kind of will leave a deeper message. So I can't wait to just dive into this and just, because I'm not very, I, I read a lot of like fantasy and all that, fantasy and sci-fi, but I, I don't read a lot of kind of literacy fiction or contemporary fiction, so you can't go wrong with something that packs a punch. Okay, I lied. I thought this was the last, or that last one was the last book box book, but I have two more, I believe, to go through. And that, this second to last one is The Bone Makers by Sarah Beth Durst. I can't wait to dive into this one, actually. This is like an anticipated release from last year that I forgot to cover, or I attempted to cover. And that video was terrible, so it never went up. But this one is following five different characters, or just one, I believe, the wife of the kind of one that died and they kind of these heroes defeated the kind of bone maker and after that like one of them has died like the wife her husband died and she's kind of like using this bone magic to kind of bring him back but when she does that some other things start going on and she's kind of like thrown back into just more battle and I believe they kind of reunite the gang but this is a book I will be including in that read-along, read-a-thon as well, so June, be looking forward to my thoughts on this. Another fantasy book that I have no idea what's going on, this was at my used bookstore, and since it's a hardcover and it's got its beautiful book of the month, like at a used bookstore, I felt like I had to pick it up, but it is Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade, and I think the reason that I picked it up was because it involves this one guy, and if you can't see, He's got a giant axe, and if you know me, I love giant axes, or kind of tridents, and then magic. So, I have no idea what's going on, I believe this kind of like turns the tables of like the kind of chosen one trope on its head, and kind of takes a spin on it, but I haven't heard much about it, or the author, so we'll be going into this blind. Okay, the final book box book, and that is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, another book that a lot of people have praised and we're anticipating it's the start of a new series, an adult fantasy series, and I have kind of like 
what I learned from those other videos of the anticipated releases, this is following kind of like a soldier and then kind of like a royal, I believe. Okay, I'm just going to read the blurb because that's just how you're going to get the best information because on all most of these I've just been giving you probably false information, but it says Terrain is a soldier stolen as a child and raised to kill and die for the Empire. She owes loyalty only to her fellow conscripts, but now she has been sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion, and the ties of blood may be stronger than she thought. Luca needs a turncoat, someone who can sway the rebels towards peace, while Luca focuses on what really matters, winning back her throne. Through assassinations and massacres in bedrooms and war rooms, Terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation, but some things aren't for sale. So it sounds like it's got a little bit of political intrigue and a little bit of romance, I believe, between the two characters, two perspectives, and I don't think I can go wrong with this. I've said that a lot about these other books, but a lot of people have been praising it so far, and I believe this is another debut novel. So yet another book to just dive right into. I've got a lot to read. So after listening to the audible version of The Sandman, I felt like I had to pick up the comics because I love The Sandman like so much. So I picked up The Sandman, the comics, and I can't, like I've already started it and some of the illustrations in here are just graphic and very horrifying. And the kind of, the audible original was very, very dark. I've got a book chat on it coming out soon, but I've been I loved the Sandman so much, and I like this has been this has been a fun time so far, and it's inspired me to just pick up more comics and fall back in love with them. I haven't read much comics since I was a youngin, so this is this will be a breeze. I think I'm already flying through this, and the other comic I picked up was Doctor Strange, Surgeon Supreme, and sadly, like this. This was like, this was good. I already finished it. Because Doctor Strange is like one of my favorite superheroes. He's a sorcerer, if you know what I mean. But this was just like a kind of bringing back the series and Marvel canceled it. So now I got to figure out where I'm going to go with Doctor Strange comics. If you know, please let me know because I love Doctor Strange and I want to get more into the comics. But this was a good, like, there's, the, the illustrations in here are kind of, like, horrifying as well. But it was, it was a fun time. I enjoyed this. And the one ebook that I need to cover is The Engineer, a Chronicles of the Acteon Story by Darren Anna Hamshaw. Did a book chat on that. It's coming out soon. And I also did a live discussion with the author on Raoul Reed's channel, so go check that out. I enjoyed the premise and the kind of initial kind of plot in the beginning. But as it goes on, I didn't really enjoy it as much, and I went in depth with kind of why in that book chat. But go check out that kind of uh, live discussion that was fun with the author. So I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description. And after so many books later, I finally got through all of them. I need to, I need to just do this maybe monthly, even though I, I, sw I told myself I'm not buying any more books. I just keep buying more books. So maybe a monthly book haul because this has been since I believe the start of the new year and it was well needed as you can tell. But please let me know any of your thoughts on any of these books that I've went through. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss out on another adventure. I'll make sure to leave some links to some other videos that I recommend you check out. If you want to connect with me on social media, I'll make sure to leave those down below as well. I hope you all have a good day and as Ellie always says, Adventure is out there. So I'll catch you next time. Bye.